Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. So you can see what I've got in front of me. It's Google Home Max. It is now available. You can get it at the Google Store, Best Buy, probably Walmart. There's a couple of places that are selling it. It does cost $3.99. So it's not inexpensive by any means, but this is supposed to be the highest end version of Google Home yet. So we've got one in house now. We want to unbox it. We want to dive in, show you guys how it works, what it looks like when it's set up in the house, all that stuff. Uh, but anyways, let's get into this first. Let's go ahead and unbox Google Home Max. All right, so we'll try to fire open the box here. So if we spin this around, um, it, it reminds me a lot of a microwave box. I don't know if anyone's bought a microwave in a while, but that's kind of the size of this thing is actually pretty big. So it, it talks about all the stuff here. So again, $3.99 for this, it comes in chalk, which is this light, lightish gray color. There's also charcoal um, in, in terms of features, which we'll try to show you, but it, you know, it's got Wi-Fi. It's, it's got dual four inch woofers. Um, it's got far field voice recognition. So you can fire up Google Assistant. It does work with iOS or Android or whatever. You can use it with multi-room audio. And the big deal is obviously the smart sound. So no matter where you put it, it uh, it attempts to properly configure itself to your room. Uh, it, it's kind of like, you could think of it like Apple's HomePod in a way in that idea, except Google's here first. We all know HomePod isn't out yet. Here's a lot of the music services that are already supported, including some home stuff like Philips Hue, because being a Google Home, you can actually control your home and all of that stuff. It has Google Assistant in there. So think of the regular Google Home. This is just the, well, the maxed out version. Uh, it also has a quad core processor, USB-C port on the back, three and a half millimeter headphone jack. It's, it's, it's decked out. So this is hi-fi audio equipment, at least according to Google. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's finally open this bad boy up. So to do that, I do believe there is a, yeah, there's a, actually a, a pull tab down here. So I'm guessing we're going to slide this thing up off the top. So pull tab there, one of the longest pull tabs in history. And that actually did give way. So I'm going to flip it back down like this and try to just raise up. Oh, nope. There's another one on the front, another pull tab, two pull tabs. All right, now we'll flip this back down and I'm guessing this just lifts up and it does. Hefty box, by the way. So we'll set that down and here is Max. So we will, yep, it's a heavy little guy. All right, so we'll just set it there for a second. Uh, in here, it looks like we've got guides and your, uh, your power cable. Power cable is somewhat substantial. So there's guides, um, here is your cable. So power there, you guys can see that. So here is Max and then here is the, uh, the rubber stand it's, it sits on. So how that works is it magnetically attaches to the bottom. So it's like it's base, right? So you, uh, you can set it this way or you can actually set it upright like that. It actually doesn't matter how you use it. You can use upright, set down, whatever. And they, and they did that and they made it flexible so you can put it, you know, in any space. Um, here is this beast though. So um, let me get in a little bit closer here so you can actually see what we're working with. All right. So this, uh, this guy is heavy, by the way, this is not a light speaker. So up front, this is obviously that, that fabric cover that we've seen on Google home and Google home mini, um, up top, there is a sticker that shows you, you can actually control the volume here by sliding left or right. There's also a tap for play and pause up there. So you do have those buttons. Um, I'm imagining these are some of the far field mics that are included. Uh, if we spin it this way. This thing says attach base here for vertical. So this is the magnetic side. I think I attached it on the wrong side initially. Yeah, so you can see there, it actually does magnetically attach there. So that would be the side if you wanted to stand it up. Uh, obviously the bottom is there. Some additional uh, far field mics right there from what I can tell. And then uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the back. So on the back, you've got your mute switch. So if you have a Google Home Mini, this is a familiar mute switch. Whereas on Google Home, it's just uh, it's just a regular button that you press in. Google logo. Then over here, obviously your power goes there. Uh, USB Type C port, auxiliary jack, and I'm guessing this little button here is just a reset button or something like that. It looks like just one of those little pin buttons you would press and hold. I can confirm that later. But yeah, that's it. Uh, this thing is. Uh, it's it's a it's a heavy one so uh, be careful if you do pick one of these up um I, I did bring in regular google home and also mini just so you can see the comparison here so um, we'll just scoot that a little to the side so there is home so if you have a home unit this is exactly how it compares you can see it's it's, it's the big guy it's uh it's the hi-fi audio equipment whereas this home which produces some decent sound is uh 
is that size. And then of course, uh, here is Mini. So the styling actually matches Mini much better, I feel like, than Google Home, but Google Home was the original. So um, here is the, the styling. This is a little bit rougher of a texture, whereas this really is sort of a softer fabric. Um, but there is that mute switch there on Mini, which this one has as well. So you're also seeing this sort of bright orange branding on some Google products now, and I saw it there as well. So anyways, let's, uh, Let's go set this bad boy up and uh, let's see how it sounds. All right, so as you can see, I've got it on shelf. So set up in a shelf nicely. Again, this is the chalk version. So it uh, you know blends it with the white I have all over my house in the background. So it's also that charcoal color in case you have darker stuff. But anyways, you get it. They went with that super neutral uh, combination there to try to, uh, well, make it blend in better. So um, I have this on a shelf here. You can see cord is already running back behind there. And again, here is the back. So USB type C port, there's your power, and that is a headphone jack in case you wanna attach other speakers or something like that. So I'm just gonna plug this in. So plugged in, and uh, you can see the lights already firing up there. So I'm assuming it's gonna ask me to start walking through this. Uh, well, actually you can see on my phone, it says uh, it already found a device. So I can tap setup on that. And it says Google Home Max found. Um, next connecting to so bluetooth in there wi-fi obviously i'm not sure which it's going to use to connect but it uh well showing blue maybe it's using bluetooth shouldn't take long oh it is connecting over wi-fi it's probably connecting it to my wi-fi network did you hear a sound i sure did uh, this would be in the living room thanks and yep that is wi-fi yep use that one in the future and it looks like there's an update ready. So we'll come back after that is finished. So as you can see, the update is ready and our speaker Hi, is ready. I'm your Google so let's assistant. figure it out. I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. It's telling me to stay here. Anyways, we'll hit finish setup. So obviously it's gonna tell you some things you can do in this Google Home app. Um, talks about Google Max's uh, smart sound. Um, how to change the volume by swiping. So lots of stuff going on there. Anyways, what we care about is uh, how it sounds, other stuff like that, but obviously one of the big things is the, uh, the uh, OK Google recognition. And you can see it fires up there, ignore. Um, so it, it has those far field, and I'll actually walk a little bit away from, uh, from the unit. I know you can't tell this on camera, but OK Google. Fired up over there, I'm about halfway across the room, ignore. Let's see even further. I know you don't, Google. So I am all the way actually back in my kitchen now, which is sort of far away. Okay, Google. And there you go again. And I'm saying that at a normal voice. I'm not shouting across the room at it by any means. Um, so ignore Google. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I can say, hey Google, set my living room lights to 80%. Brightness to 80%. And I'm sitting in the living room. I don't know if you can see those come on or not. I can say, hey Google. Oops, hey Google. Set my temperature to 70. Sure, setting the hallway main to 70 degrees. Or, you know, we could just say, hey Google, play my thumbs up playlist. Sure, here's your Google Play Music playlist called Thumbs Up. So music is obviously one of the big things we want to listen to here. So uh, let's try and turn the volume up to see what happens. So there was a swipe across. We've got this little bar up top. That's a swipe across. Well, if I tap it, that'll actually pause it. If I swipe to either the left or right, that'll go volume up or down. And you can see the dots are showing that. So anyway, let's just crank it for a second. That is max volume. I don't know what that's doing to the microphone, but uh, it's pretty loud. Cool thing is you can actually control volume also with the Google Home app. So what I did there is it shows that we're playing a song and I can tap on that and I can scroll that up or down. 
and even pause if I want. So anyways, um, Google and Max, we will obviously report back on uh, all sorts of stuff, including if it's good enough, if you should buy it, if you should spend $400 on it, if it fits nicely into uh, the whole setup and all of that stuff. So anyways, uh, we'll be back with more, more Droid Life. Peace.